Nityan guys, welcoming you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. Today's video, I wanted to share about something that Swamiji shared in satsang recently. He was saying that um, his gurus, when he was younger and he was getting trained, they told him the flow of how um, you should make things evolve to revive Hinduism properly. And it basically goes by, number one, deity. Have a deity and start worshipping and taking care of the deity. Number two, Goshala, cow shelter. Number three, Gurukul. Uh, it's a school where you teach these principles and you raise children to cherish these powerful cognitions and to cherish the divine within them. And four, build a temple. So this is, this is what he shared in the satsang. And I wanted to share one click I had because I was contemplating on why this sequence. So this is a kind of understanding I got, a click I got regarding the importance of this sequence. Um, the deity worship, deity worship, as, as far as I understand, is the, the foundation. Why? Because worshiping God is, is going to make you realize the importance of cherishing the divine within you. When you have a deity, you have to take care of it. It is the embodiment of God. Whether you are up or down, whether you're inspired or depressed or whatever you go through, you cannot do, you cannot, you have to take care of the deity. So it gives you an experience of going beyond your ups and downs so that you can experience your consciousness and you can strengthen the understanding that yes, I cannot, my ups and downs cannot dictate my relationship with the deity. I have to take care of the deity. I have to offer food. I have to take care of it. I have to dress it. I have to bathe it. I have to put it to sleep. I have to wake it up. And like that, you constantly cherish this flow with the deity and your ups and downs cannot interfere because there's no question of interfering with that. So that allows you to experience you as a consciousness within you. And it allows you to cherish the divine and understand the importance of cherishing the divine. When you start to cherish the divine outside, automatically you will start to realize to cherish the divine inside. So, but, the thing, but what I realized is deity is very important because if you start to cherish the divine inside, because it is not as physical and as easily experienceable than the five senses, the deity that you engage with with the five senses, Many times when we just focus on wor working on the divine inside of us, we lose track of it because it's not tangible initially. Of course, it becomes more and more tangible as you become an intense uh, living when you live this lifestyle in <laughs> intensely, sorry. Um, but yeah, so first is deity. No ups and downs. You have to take care of it. You have to experience you as consciousness because consciousness is beyond ups and downs. It has nothing to do with ups and downs of the mind. And, and you have to cherish the divine and sacred sentiments. Number two, then you expand into Goshala. Goshala, what I, what I kind of click with is like, Goshala is like, you have to take care of something. See, a deity is, uh, is not demanding. It is demanding in the way that you have to be integrated to it, but it will always be there. It will not, it's, it is like a stable experience, as far as I understand in my, in my cognition. Whereas when you have a cow, you know, you don't know at some point the cow falls sick or the cow goes, you know, so it's like there's more variables of um, you have to take care of something outside of you like the deity, but something that is not too static. See, the deity experience, my experience of the deity, it's more like a, a kind of a cosmic relationship and remembering that cosmic relationship through the deity with Paramashiva, with the Guru. But the cow is also, there's also a physical component of it. So first is taking the responsibility for that feeling connection with the divine. Second is to continue to take care of that feeling connection with the divine and also take care of a living being, a cow, which is very much sacred in Hinduism. Uh, I'll, I'll make a video about it also in the future, near future. But cows are very, very important for various reasons. But uh, so like that, you expand your, your level of responsibilism and you start to take care of an animate object, we can say. And when you get comfortable with that, when you're able to handle the deity and the cows, or the cow, uh, then you can expand into Gurukul. Gurukul is another stretch, because it's not only a living being like a cow, but it's much more active and it's much more demanding than a cow. It's a kid, right? So kids, they will demand much more. So then you can expand your level, your, the maturity of your responsibilism by starting to take care of kids. When you take care of kids, 
it is naturally your responsibility to share the feeling connection. So what you've experienced with the deity, you have to transmit that to the kid. And not only that, you have to, you know, you have to help them when they go through ups and downs. You have to keep them busy. You have to keep them engaged. You have to in infuse seeking into them and guide them into this lifestyle. And once you become, uh, you have a certain kind of stability within that, then you go towards temple. And so on, she was saying that temple should be run by kid. When you have kids which understand the importance of sacred sentiments and who do not, who are not bound by ups and downs of the mind, then these kids can take care of the temple, which is basically a big house for deities. So, I, so that's what I kind of cognize and that's what I felt that's important. So for you to, so for the, for the, the level of maturity of your responsibilism to happen from sacred sentiments going beyond your ups and downs to a certain extent, it means you don't have to be fully enlightened before you move to the second step. That's what I mean. I mean, you go to the point where you kind of, you know, you start to really be ferocious with your ups and downs and you break your patterns. Then you move towards Goshala. So continuing these sacred sentiments, but with a living being, which is more demanding. Then you go through kids, which is much more demanding, where you also have to transmit. See, with the cow, you don't have to transmit the sacred sentiments because they have their own space. But the kid, you have to transmit the sacred sentiments. You have to make sure you have to enrich them with these sacred sentiments. So that's a, a deeper level of responsibility. And then when you successfully do that, then these kids can start the temple and they can stand and protect these sacred sentiments and make the whole thing happen. So that's the click I had. I think it's an amazing, I think Hinduism is, is best. It's so deep, it's so intelligent. They, they, they really mastered the science of life. That's what I feel. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys in this video. So I'll see you guys soon. Again, thanking you a lot for your support watching these videos. Um, don't forget to like, again, small action, which changes uh, things, uh, comment as well. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in another video. And uh, inviting you to to live, live these principles, stand for Hinduism. Hinduism is the path for, is the future of humanity. The freedom, the, the depth and the variety available in, Hindu, in, in Hinduism is actually what we are, uh, each one of us, seeking. So, um, yes, with that being said, Nityanandam, I'll see you guys very soon. Nityanandam. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes.